Sometimes it led him to be a little kooky. All the time, it drove him, and probably was the reason why New York loved John Starks. His passion for the game that went with his unbreakable self-confidence even when he battled Superman. He was the ex-grocery packer, the cba -er that made the big time. Maybe we all thought he was living our dream. In eight years, John Starks was one of the builders of the Knicks as we now know them, a team whose popularity has never been higher. Along the way, he earned all-star accolades and was rewarded for being basketball's sixth man. But John wanted the team to succeed and offered constant reminders that he cherished that chance to win in New York. In a way, he'll always be a Nick, always number three. But tonight, he's number nine and a Golden State Warrior. This is going to be strange, no question about that. Uh, but, you know, in this league, things do happen, and you just have to deal with it. Uh, you know, I know I'm going to feel something once I hit, hit the floor. Starks is a warrior because the Knicks wanted Latrell's free wealth, and it took him just seconds and a trip to the finals to claim his own spot in New York. Last year, as Freewell did his playoff thing, Starks was in Celebrity Row, where he belongs at Madison Square Garden. It was strange, but, you know, I, I tell people I, I was excited, uh, you know, for this organization and uh, for the fans in New York because uh, that was my main goal is to bring a, a championship here to this organization as well as for the city of New York because they deserve it. And uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to do it while I was here. But to see them get back and see Patrick almost attain a championship, you know, I was excited about it. Compare the two players. Sprewell is prone to big emotional outbursts. So it starts. And in fact, the more you think about it, the two have many basketball traits in common. That has not gone unnoticed. He's a very emotional, high tense and player, to say the least. Uh, you know, he's exciting. Uh, he gets up and down the court, uh, he runs and jumps dunks and uh, you know he's a very uh, solid shooter uh, he makes things happen and so he, he's a, a player that I can relate to you know just because of the emotional aspect that he brings to the game Latrell Sprewell's return to Golden State this season was filled with all sorts of venomous emotion PJ Carlissimo took the high road maybe because he has his own problems the team is 2 and 14 and Starks has been frustrated he and the coach have had their moments at times you know we, and had some problems, you know, but uh, PJ is the type of coach uh, who forgets about it, you know what I mean? Uh, once it, the game is over with and, and you're off the court, it's like it, it never happened. And, uh, and that's the good quality that he has that I like about him, you know, you don't hold grudges. And uh, as a coach, you just, uh, as a player, I mean, you, you respect that, uh, you know, but we still have some growing that we have to do together and so he can understand me a little bit more and I understand him a little bit more. Good or bad, Starks leaves a legacy of drama behind him in New York. Pick your favorite. Remember when he beat the Phoenix Suns in the last second and once again showed he always had the guts for the big shot? There was that game when he broke his nose versus the Utah Jazz. Like a hockey player, he wore a mask and scored 24. The literal collisions with the Indiana Pacers, which built one of the best rivalries the Knicks have ever had. Then there was 1993. Many say Madison Square Garden's never been louder. This is Jordan like Marv, as any other player in the NBA can get. Dunk, uh, I think that was a, a statement <laughs> uh, telling people that I'm here. And uh, I guess. Um, Horace Grant and Michael, uh, that situation right there in the time of the game, I think what made that play so exciting. Uh, it established me as a as an up-and-coming uh, player in this league, so uh, that was kind of like my stamp. Of course, no one's perfect. That was part of rooting for John Starks. John Starks for three. Get off. Anthony for Starks. It was tough for me. I think uh, I put so much pressure on myself coming into that game. I really didn't sleep, you know, at all. I'm probably up, probably got about an hour of sleep that night before the game because, you know, I wanted it too bad. And I tried to go out there and put everything on my shoulder to, to, to make it happen. And uh, I didn't go out there and play a relaxed ball game. And uh, that's one regret that I have. 
So tonight, all this is part of the story of John Starks moving on, knowing that not too deep inside is a kid who refuses to grow up, a kid who loved being a New York Nick every day, all the time, to the point where he would kiss the floor. And who knows, John may do that again tonight to remind us his passion for this place will never die. I just had to see how I'm feeling at that particular time. You know, uh, it was just something uh, that I did because uh, the fans, you know, for the fans and let them know that uh, we appreciate y'all for supporting us. And, uh, you know, I just had to see how I feel at that time. I want to list the stars of the 90s. Who do you think is the most popular Nick of the decade of the 90s? Vote A, Patrick Ewing, B, Alan Houston, C, Anthony Mason, D, Charles Oakley, E. Latrell Sprewell, F. John Starks, G. Herb Williams. Cast your vote at msgnetwork.com on the weekend throughout our coverage tonight, and then Michael Kay and I will discuss on the post game. There's John Starks getting emotionally ready for a night that should be filled with a lot of emotions.